Number 1. UK Museum agrees to return looted Benin bronzes to Nigeria. A London museum agreed Sunday to return a collection of Benin bronzes looted in the late 19th century from what is now Nigeria, as cultural institutions throughout Britain come under pressure to repatriate artifacts acquired during the colonial era. The Horniman Museum and Gardens in southeast London said that it would transfer a collection of 72 items to the Nigerian government. The decision comes after Nigeria's National Commission for Museums and Monuments formally asked for the artifacts to be returned earlier this year and following a consultation with community members, artists, and schoolchildren in Nigeria and the UK, the museum said. The evidence is very clear that these objects were acquired through force, and external consultation supported our view that it is both moral and appropriate to return their ownership to Nigeria," Eve Salomon, chair of the museum's board of trustees, said in a statement. The Horniman is pleased to be able to take this step, and we look forward to working with the NCMM to secure longer-term care for these precious artifacts. The Horniman's collection is a small part of the 3,000 to 5,000 artifacts taken from the Kingdom of Benin in 1897 when British soldiers attacked and occupied Benin City as Britain expanded its political and commercial influence in West Africa. The British Museum alone holds more than 900 objects from Benin, and National Museum Scotland has another 74. Others were distributed to museums around the world. The artifacts include plaques, animal and human figures, and items of royal regalia made from brass and bronze by artists working for the Royal Court of Benin. The general term Benin bronzes is sometimes applied to items made from ivory, coral, wood and other materials as well as the metal sculptures. Countries including Nigeria, Egypt, and Greece, as well indigenous peoples from North America to Australia are increasingly demanding the return of artifacts and human remains amid a global reassessment of colonialism and the exploitation of local populations. Nigeria and Germany recently signed a deal for the return of hundreds of Benin bronzes. That followed French President Emmanuel Macron's decision last year to sign over 26 pieces known as the Abomi Treasures, priceless artworks of the 19th century Dalmay Kingdom in present-day Benin, a small country that sits just west of Nigeria. Number 2. South Korean rain turns roads into rivers, leaves nine dead. Some of the heaviest rain in decades swamped South Korea's capital region, turning Seoul's streets into car-clogged rivers and sending floods cascading into subway stations. At least nine people were killed, some drowning in their homes, and six others were missing, with more rain forecast, officials said Tuesday. More than 45 centimeters, 18 inches, of rain was measured in Seoul's hardest-hit Dongjak district from Monday to Tuesday evening. Precipitation in the area exceeded 14 centimeters, 5.5 inches, per hour at one point Monday night, the highest hourly downpour measured in Seoul since 1942. Deserted cars and buses were scattered across streets as the water receded on Tuesday. Workers cleared uprooted trees, mud and debris with excavators and blocked off broken roads. Landslide warnings were issued in nearly 50 cities and towns, and 160 hiking paths in Seoul and mountainous Gangwon province were closed. The heavy rainfall is expected to continue for days. We need to maintain our sense of alert and respond with all-out effort, President Yoon Suk-yeol said at the government's emergency headquarters. The military was prepared to deploy troops to help with recovery efforts if requested by cities or regional governments, Defense Ministry spokesperson Moon Hong-sik said. The rain began Monday morning and strengthened through the evening. By nightfall, people were wading through thigh-high waters in streets in Gangnam, one of Seoul's most bustling business and leisure districts, where cars and buses were stuck in mud-brown waters. Commuters evacuated as water cascaded down the stairs of the Izu subway station like a waterfall. Number 3. Beluga whale which strayed into France's Seine River euthanized despite rescue efforts. A beluga whale which transfixed France after straying into the River Seine has been euthanized after its already ailing condition deteriorated during an unprecedented rescue mission to save it, local authorities said Wednesday. After nearly six hours of work, the 800-kilogram cetacean was lifted from the river by a net and crane at around 4 a.m., 2 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time, 
on Wednesday and placed on a barge under the immediate care of a dozen veterinarians. But the whale, whose already poor condition deteriorated during transportation, was put down after it began having difficulty breathing. A beluga whale of this size should normally weigh around 1,200 kilograms. The 4-meter, 13-foot, whale was spotted more than a week ago heading towards Paris and was stranded some 130 kilometers, 80 miles, inland from the channel at saint pierre la garenne in Normandy. Since Friday, the animal's movement inland had been blocked by a lock at saint pierre la garenne 70 kilometers northwest of Paris, and its health had deteriorated after it refused to eat. The 24 divers involved in the operation and the rescuers handling the ropes had to try several times between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. to lure the animal into the nets to be lifted out of the water. The Beluga Whales Rescue transfixed France, prompting nationwide coverage of its removal from the Seine River. Thank you for watching All That Happens. Remember to like and subscribe. And we hope to see you next time.